immediately getting into questions because I don't want to, you know, waste time. So <coughs> I'll start off with uh, Bala. It is predicted that India will be the third largest economy by 2035. So where do you see Kerala's economy in 2035? Um, the present numbers are that uh, Kerala's economy is about $150 billion. And Tamil Nadu's economy is about uh, double that. Um, and Tamil Nadu has, government has announced a plan one year ago that uh, when the new DMK government came into power that they plan to uh, take uh, raise the GD, G, uh, gross state domestic product of Tamil Nadu to one trillion dollars by 2030. I have not seen any corresponding plan uh, by the government of Kerala, but if you apply current growth rates, etc., it would uh, by 2030 Kerala economy in the normal course would double. So, uh, if you compound the mm. current rates of growth, nominal rates of growth, so that would expect to be around, uh, uh, say, around 300 billion by uh, 2030. And by 2035, if everything goes on like this normal, it may <coughs> it may increase by another corresponding figure i don't think it will double again by okay. 2035 so uh, what i would expect therefore is that uh, uh, judging by the last 10 years uh, growth of uh, gross state domestic product in all states and the gross national gross domestic product of india the proportions would remain uh, roughly the same mm. And um, um, if the Indian economy is expected to go to a particular uh, level by 2035, the same proportion will be maintained by Kerala, if other things being equal. If okay. things remain roughly the same and all the current trends also remain the same, I see that the Kerala economy will continue to grow. It will grow reasonably well. And uh, it will um, uh, continue to be at the same rate of growth as the rest of the Indian economy, if not probably slightly ahead. Okay, so That's 2030, good. you think it's going to double, right, Bala? If everything is as it is, that is what you feel. What about you, Sam? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we all want uh, Kerala to grow, and uh, and we all hope that the Kerala will grow well. But uh, I think we have a strong uh, issues uh, compared to the rest of India. And uh, I have no doubt that India will grow. Um, this is uh, everybody in around the world acknowledges uh, that uh, uh, this is the century for India. Yes. So India will grow, uh, but we will face tremendous competition as a small state, Kerala. And we have a number of other challenges uh, which I am sure uh, you will be getting into, Kerala, uh, compared to the other states uh, uh, and especially other South Indian states which are all doing very well. So if you look at many of the investors in Kerala too, even from Kerala are trying to go into uh, the nearby states and, and invest in Tamil Nadu or Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. So Kerala uh, will have a lot of challenges. So the potential to grow, as Bala said, is there. We can double. Why not? Just stop at doubling. We can even grow fa faster than that. But will we is a bigger question. Oh, okay. Now, I totally believe that, you know, we cannot talk about the future of Kerala without first addressing the current challenges. So let's uh, just go a little deep into understanding what are the current challenges. So I identified a few challenges here. So we let's hear from the speakers also what they think. One is migration of our youth. So this is something that uh, personally I have, uh, you know, being a part of the industry, I'm uh, aware that there is large number of students who are uh, going for study, then they continue to work and they do not come back to Kerala. So. Uh, India is becoming younger as a nation, but what about Kerala? Are we going to, uh, uh, is our population going to be more uh, retirement population? So, Bala? Well, <coughs> again, here the thing is we must go by data. See, there's a lot about Kerala which is uh, anecdotal and which is uh, um, based on very strong impressions people have. Like, uh, just to give an example, a uh, slight deviation from your question, but I'll come back to that, is that there is not only very little industry in Kerala, that deindustrialization of Kerala is happening. That is contradicted by the data. In 1991, manufacturing, I'm just taking, if you take manufacturing, it was 7% of gross state domestic product. In 2020, that has grown to 14% of gross domestic product. So what does that mean? It means manufacturing sector has been growing. 
Now, if you say then where are the industries, that's the next step. We have to go to industries. My, I have re I've recently written a book where I've talked about 50 high-tech manufacturing companies which have come up in the last 30 years. These are not a single of these companies was promoted before 30 years ago. They've all come up in the last 30 years. So my po and they've all grown. They've all started as startups. Okay. Started small with five lakh investment. Some of them have turnover of 2,000 crores and 2,500 crores. They are the exceptions. There are a few of them. But by and large, most of them are ranging from 300 to 500 to 700 crores. And this is only manufacturing sector. I've taken a sector for which nobody thinks anything is happening in Kerala. And I'm saying there is the evidence is there is plenty happening in Kerala. So I feel we have to move beyond impressions and what each of us know within inverted commerce. And we have to look at data. Okay. And that exercise really hasn't happened not only from the government, not only from the media, it even hasn't happened from industry associations. Even so, industry Mala, you, associations you feel the migration is actually not happening, the youth? No, so the, the data shows that migration is coming down and reverse migration from uh, the main um, destinations of migration um, for Kerala is actually happening. So we, and in fact, there is concern that we have another kind of problem. What are all these people going to do who are going to come back? There is, yes. there is an apprehension about that. Uh, for that also, there is an answer. I mean, it's not a negative thing. I think it's a very positive sign that skilled people are coming back, yes. who remitted money back, who have bank balances, who have assets. So they are, they are a very productive section of society who are coming back. Why should we uh, look on it as a problem? We should see it as an as a, as a, as a opportunity to do something positive. Okay, Sam. Uh, I think we need to look at it a little differently. Uh, the, the migration that uh, happened in the previous 30 years and the migration that maybe has hap started happening from the last 10 years are actually very different. Right? The previous oh, migration, we have to go to the Gulf Rajang. If you go to the Gulf Rajang, they are the ones that uh, will come back. Because why? I mean, n none of those countries are going to give them citizenships and all that. So they are sending the money back and they want to come back and it's great that they're coming back. But most of them are finding that it is very difficult for them to become really productive here. Namada Nadu Mari, Patiruda, Nupodo, Golem, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Poy, Vancha, Korchu, Paisa, and Daki, Nola, Lade. Other than Moshaki Parelato, every Paisa and Daki, Rajitin, Korea Paisa, Rachu, Raja Pasha, our Kuda on the pet and the productive one, Nala difficulty. Government Korea carrying with Cheyarikim, Aduna now. But she in a the last ten years, he can the migration where I am. Educated youth on a Kudulum Pune, the problem that you are saying. Matepa to all a couple of engineers, doctors, lawyers, and higher educated youngsters, Elam, Matala Rajinga like upon it. I think every Gulf Lake out of the parents of poet on that thing. Out of them, Engana, Ingo to Vernon Pogram, Engana, US Leco, Canada Leco, Australia Leco, England Leco. I There is a brain drain, there is migration. There is a maximum government is a grandum. Uh, scholarships, loans, soft loans, even a even our education system is a very important Higher education, especially primary and education, is very important. That's why we have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do We have to do We have to do higher studies. We have to do this. We have Risk on the our tissue very like exactly. <laughs> we are happy if they go, but then you know, at some point, we need to come back. We got a window now, yes. How do we bring them back? Exactly, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, uh, another challenge which I see uh, in Kerala is um, we at least uh, this is very important to me personally, also because I do a lot of work for women empowerment. We have a lot of educated, smart, talented women who are at home. And uh, how do we bring, uh, because we all know it's a research fact that if we bring more women uh, who to enter into entrepreneurial ventures, we bro bring in more women where they can get jobs, it will impact the GDP of the state. So how do we bring, how do we get women out and how do we you know, push them into entrepreneurship? What do we do from your perspective, Bala? Yeah. So uh, this, uh, this is a problem which is an India-wide problem. Um, female workforce, labor force participation rate in India is not only low, it is dropping. 
Yes. So this in, is in Kerala, it's twenty-three percent. No, but that's higher than the all India average. So the okay. so the pro so the point here is in India we have a problem, and we have to try to find out why uh, that is happening. What uh, what are the reasons for low female workforce participation rates? Because it's leading to low household incomes. Yes. Because if only one person is working, now of course there are the, there is the other issue which we need to take into account. Today, in uh, if you look at the way, if our national income statistics, if you are looking at the calculating method, no, ki kai nyal, if a housewife, a weetam ma, weetali chayi in the jolly, that is for not only cooking, cleaning, caring for the children, caring for the adults throughout the daily, that to night, where a organ, where a, if weetam ma chayi na, if jolly ke, not it is not even contributing to GDP by one rupee, Absolutely. because this is. But just look at the under Viroda Vasam. If I'm random Vidal Adita Tondagi, I'll car E. Vitama boy Adita Vitale, Ide Jolie Adita Vitija, Mate Vitama Ipratwan the Jaydal. GDP goes up. <laughs> yes. Up a Idur Viroda Vasana because so it is just an accounting problem. E. National Income Accounting Conventions, Beat Nagati Jaina, unpaid job is not considered as productive work. That is just an opinion. It is not a fact at all. So my point here is the fact that our Vitamma is unemployed and all that is completely wrong because our Vitamma, our Jolie Chaydil Lengil, our our household will have to find somebody else to do that work. Absolutely. See, if, if there is an adult, if there is an elderly person who requires, who has some comorbidities and who requires caring, our Vitamma caring Chaydil Lengil, somebody else kashu udhu thamma malu uru carer avada nirthandi veru. So my point here is. I think first we must get it out of our heads that the e bit jolly matran jayinda bitam ammare unemployed anandam allor feeling is completely wrong. They are very productively employed, and thanks to them, we are all able to go and study, and we are able to uh, work and do so many other things. So I I first think so, is so I women think working at home should be paid. Well, it, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's another opinion. I <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't disagree with that. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah. That is definitely one way of looking at it, Bala. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think there's another context here from what your question yeah. was. Uh, we all agree that I mean, women women uh, does most of the work at home, and that should be accounted for, and that should be paid, uh, paid or at least you know seen in very good light. But uh, I think the more uh, important point that Anisha was trying to bring out of the question is that there are high educated women. who shouldn't be wasting their time just because uh, you know they they had a child or they had two children and they are back in home they got out of the career path joli in maari nunnu anju gollo ettu gollo pattu gollo maari nunnu avare bhayangara underutilized aanu appo avare aa veettu joli cheynadathu value illa annalladalla pakshe avare aa sherike adutha 10 20 30 30 kolla nammal ellam we are all leaving longer appo ee baakiyulla samayam avare adu cheyidaano irikkanda അതിന് നമുക്ക് നിവൃത്തിയില്ലെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ബീഹാറിൽ നിന്നോ എവിടെ നിന്നാണ് വരുന്നത് വെച്ചാൽ ആൾക്കാരെ വെച്ച് നമുക്ക് ആ കുട്ടി വീട്ടുകാര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യാം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ പ്രായമായ ആൾക്കാരെ നോക്കേണ്ടത് നമ്മുടെ പഴയ ഫിലോസഫി മാറ്റി വെക്കാം കുട്ടികൾ അല്ല നോക്കേണ്ടത് കുട്ടികൾ അതിനുള്ള ഉത്തരവാദിത്വം എടുത്താൽ മതി ആ പ്രായമായ ആൾക്കാരെ നോക്കുന്നത് അതിന് ട്രെയിൻഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആൾക്കാരെ വെച്ച് നോക്കുന്നതാണ് അവർക്ക് കൊടുക്കാനുള്ള ട്വൻറ്റി തൗസൻഡ് റുപ്പീസോ ട്വൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് തൗസൻഡ് റുപ്പീസോ പെർ മന്ത് അതിനേക്കാളും കൂടുതൽ ഒരു എഡ്യൂക്കേറ്റഡ് വുമണ് തിരിച്ച് കരിയർ ഫോഴ്സിലേക്ക് ഇറങ്ങാൻ പറ്റിയാൽ ദേ ക്യാൻ മേക്ക് ദ മണി അതിന് അതിന് അതിനുള്ള സൊസൈറ്റിക്ക് ഭയങ്കര വാല്യൂ ആയിരിക്കും അപ്പം ബാല നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇവിടെ ട്വൻറ്റി ത്രീ പെർസെൻറ്റോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ലെസ് ദാൻ ദാറ്റ് ഉള്ളു വിമൻ ആക്ച്വലി വർക്കിംഗ് ഫോർ പെയ്ഡ് മണി മീൻ മോസ്റ്റ് ആർ വർക്കിംഗ് അറ്റ് ഹോം ബട്ട് ഫോർ പെയ്ഡ് മണി ഇസ്റ്റ് ചൈനയിൽ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് സെവൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് പെർസെൻറ്റ് അപ്പോൾ അപ്പോൾ സി ഹൗ യു നോ വേർ വി ആർ അപ്പോൾ ഈ പുറത്ത് പോയി വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ രണ്ട് ഗുണമുണ്ട് ഒന്ന് ആ പൈസ അക്കൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നതും പൈസ വരുന്നത് മാത്രമല്ല വിമൻ ബിക്കം എൻപവേഡ് റൈറ്റ് മറ്റേ വീട്ടിലെ ജോലി ചെയ്ത് നിൽക്കുമ്പോൾ അതിന് നമ്മൾ അക്കൗണ്ട് ചെയ്താലും പൈസ കൊടുത്താൽ തന്നെയും എൻപവർമെൻ്റ് അവിടെ നടക്കുന്നില്ല അപ്പം നമ്മുടെ ആ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ തന്നെ നമ്മളൊരു പാട്രിയാക്കൽ സൊസൈറ്റി ആണ് ഈ പാട്രിയാക്കൽ സൊസൈറ്റിയിൽ ഒരു 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 സെക്കൻഡ് ക്ലാസ് സിറ്റിസൺ പോലെ ആവും നമ്മുടെ നമ്മുടെ എഡ്യൂക്കേറ്റഡ് വിമൻ അപ്പം അത് വളരെ കഷ്ടമാണ് അതിന് ഗവൺമെൻറ് കേരള ഗവൺമെൻറ് എസ്പെഷ്യലി അസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് ദാറ്റ് വെരി ക്ലിയർലി കെ ഡിസ്ക് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞൊരു ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ കെ ഡിസ്ക് ഇസ് പുട്ട് ഇറ്റ് എസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദർ പ്രൈം ഗോൾസ് ഓൺ ഹൗ ടു ബ്രിങ് ദ വിമൻ ബാക്ക് ബാക്ക് ടു ദ വർക്ക് അതിന് സൊല്യൂഷൻ പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ട്രെയിനിങ് കൊടുക്കണം അവർക്ക് അവരെ എൻപവർ ചെയ്യാൻ തിരിച്ച മിക്കവാറും നല്ല സ്കിൽഡ് ആണ് പക്ഷേ അവരുടെ ആ കോൺഫിഡൻസ് പോയതാണ് കുറെ നാൾ വർക്ക് ഫോഴ്സ് ചെയ്യുന്നു മാറി നിന്നപ്പോൾ അപ്പോൾ അവരെ തിരിച്ച് വർക്ക് ഫോഴ്സിലേക്ക് കൊണ്ടുവരാൻ കമ്പനീസിനെ വേണമെങ്കിൽ കൊടുക്കാം കമ്പനീസിനെ വേണമെങ്കിൽ ഫണ്ട് ചെയ്യാം ലൈക്ക് ഇഫ് യു ഹയർ ഫൈവ് പീപ്പിൾ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് എ
you know alagil angane alagil half the cost will be met for 3 months or 6 months by the government angane ikkola schemes the government is very seriously thinking about it appo i think uh, that we will be addressing very soon yes in yes in fact uh, kdesk is doing their primary objective is to bring the women back into the workforce because they've also understood that that is going to directly impact the Uh, GDP. So, so it's a, 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 if I can just add something. Yes, yes. See, the whole point is we are keep saying bringing the women back into the workforce. My point is they are already in the workforce. But but, but, but they are you know, not getting see, paid, Bala. No, that's that's the whole see, point. No, no. See, the, if it is an caring for for example the most in demand and shortage of carers in the western in the richest countries in the world are carers for ill people for yes. unwell people for old people all illa joli and the so they are willing to pay any amount here what happened is the same job which is done we are we are not even treating it as a value added work so my you know for, for example during the uh, during the um um and the uh, uh, covid pandemic during yes. the covid pandemic uh, i remember reading an article about our asha workers in the contribution towards the caring for the elders in the homes the comorbidities etc these are people these are women who are paid only 7000 6 to 7000 rupees a month mm. they were going to the homes of people looking after elderly people in that home and not just one home sometimes two okay. three households oru 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 edangal oru neighborhood illa and they were coming back now if you value that work by normal economic standards and not see value is not what you pay that's a very mistaken notion of neoclassical economics that value is determined by what you know whatever the market fixes the market has fixed a, a, a wage of 7000 rupees a month for an asha worker who's a skilled person who is going and caring for but the same thing if you want to get a trained nurse you'll have to pay 35000 yes. to 50000 rupees but you're paying only 7000 rupees for this so my point here is nani i am not getting into this endha varane saangedigamayittulla allengi technicalities la alla kadakkunna these are not definitional issues there is a serious problem of perception when we consider that 50% of the our population adile 26% labor force participation rate la baaki avasheshikkunna ver they are not doing anything productive nalla oru notion which we have is completely wrong that's what i'm trying to say no 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 bala 100% they what they're doing is productive but who is putting value to that productivity that is the question and here the right and and women women you know end of the day if they need to be paid for them to feel their value also in the sense that they need to feel empowered the whole family is watching them anyway we'll we'll go on to the next <laughs> this is uh, this is very important to me so that is why i wanted both of you to answer that okay and uh, okay now uh, I just one more i'll okay one more one more question and we'll get an introduction okay now uh, we, we are fully aware that india got an investment of uh, uh, 142 billion dollars but kerala got only 0.42 out of that package so what do, what do we need to do so that we get more investment capital investment into the state first thing i think is uh, what we should see is uh, um, uh, we should not place in my opinion uh, uh, too much importance on uh, uh, the ability or un- un- inability to attract foreign investment let's just look at one 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 figure from 1991 when manufacturing in kerala was 7% of gross state domestic product manufacturing in kerala has now improved to 14% of gross state domestic product not one rupee of this investment came from outside kerala everything came from local kerala businessmen like me and many others like sam and others they brought in this money okay and let's so and uh, and this happened how if you take in 1980 or 1990 cv jacob invest 5 lakh rupees and starts a small company called synthite today synthite's turnover is 2500 crores it employs 2500 people in god knows how many factories he even has three factories in xinjiang province in in um, in uh, you know in china yeah. like that there are many examples so the point here is foreign the f- inability to attract foreign investment is import is important i am not saying it's unimportant but it's not a fatal flaw here in kerala because kerala has managed quite well in this last 30 years what has happened in kerala 
if you factor in um, uh, invisibles that is invert remittances into gross state domestic product it's mm. not com it's not counted as kerala's uh, gdp it's counted as only in the national income okay. national income accounting the convention anadha athre ullu but the money belongs to kerala it's coming here it's spending here in kerala adum kuda kanakkil eduthal kerala has the number um, uh, the the top uh, what you call per capita gdp in india it has the number one per capita consumption expenditure these are metrics of economic development what else is economic development other than having the highest per capita you know consumption expenditure for a household to live in so my point here is we are in this same period of 30 years rather than being a failure in my opinion this state has been doing quite well okay sam uh, when, when i chatted with sam he made a statement you know uh, i couldn't find startups here i couldn't find good enough companies here to invest why did you make that statement sam yeah i mean uh, uh, bala is right in the sense that kerala has uh, done a lot but uh, kerala still lags behind uh, most of the other states i mean the 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 growing states in india but let us keep that aside but in kerala whatever bala says i think if all of you our perception in kerala is that there are not enough jobs now most of the youngsters here after their engineering or whatever high, this thing they don't get good jobs here there are not enough companies here to not only to attract a foreign capital but to create uh, to give jobs to our youngsters i think that is it. we are uh, as a, we are running out of time so i'll compress a few other points of the challenges that kerala faces irrespective of whatever we say we are all like very patriotic and we love kerala i mean you know uh, i i always wanted to live in kerala and i will live in kerala till i die i mean so there is there is no issue there as far as the love to the state and love to the country goes but at the same time there are severe problems that kerala has we have very bad infrastructure right uh, what 50, 40 years back the way, uh, time it took from me to for me to travel from trivandrum to uh, calicut uh, is is more now not less and th that every one of you faces and uh, you know there's only one flight from kochi to calicut a day as kochi to uh, trivandrum a day i mean we have three good airports but our it's that four good airports that infrastructure is not being used properly we we have severe problems in uh, waste all the waste that is generated and, and 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 we are facing lot of new diseases because of all the waste that is accumulating in our backwaters all our rivers are completely screwed up i mean you know sand mining and all that so again i'm not being negative i'm saying all this can be fixed so how can it be fixed i take 2 minutes this can be fixed by going back to biology okay the the we we the last 20 years or 25 years of growth in india happened because of the it boom do baya says manufacturing and those areas were there but still india became known world over for it software we became the center that the world would look up to in the next 50 or 30 to 50 years the most important growth will come from biology okay so because i am saying that so confidently because last 15 years i have been working on genomics so genomics and the sequencing the dna has brought so much power into the hands of our species so why, how could we come up with a vaccine covid vaccine so fast mainly because we are able to sequence the virus within hours so how can we track all the different variants of the viruses mainly because of genome sequencing so genome sequencing is there already ready there but now we can go to the next step we can edit that genome so we can actually make changes to the genome so that it we can make it do things that nobody ever thought of so we can cure diseases human so diseases uh, sam so let's expect see, since you're a phd in uh, genetics let's expect a new solution from sam uh, from yeah, science yeah absolutely <laughs> i have written a book that is what it's coming to so the solution is written in the book <laughs> on what we should do to take advantage of what i call the bio wave so the bio wave is coming whether we want it or not we can close our eyes and say like no 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 gene editing is wrong we can't play god and uh, but people will do it around the world so we'll either we take the leadership we can become india and especially kerala has the skill set to become the r&d back back office for the rest of the world so we are we are we, are, we can act, so by the time our guys go extras we can get them back and give them good jobs in, in genome editing in synthetic biology we can make a new microbes which will eat the plastic so you know so so it will get rid of the waste so these type of solutions are possible i'm not talking about fantasies these are possible they work in the lab there's a lot of work to be done to get them into practical use in the field uh, uh, and there are challenges i mean there are ethical challenges 
uh, you know when you're doing genome editing for a child there are other challenges of risk when you put a create a new uh, microbial species uh, to tackle a problem will they go out of our control or will they take over all those issues are there but that is the only way the challenges of the industrial so industrial technologies can be fixed okay uh, it's not accounted in the gdp but there is something called productivity too right if you are doing things which are wasting a lot of time but at the same time not can you keep it closer because i don't think if you are doing a lot of things but at the same time we are not managing the time properly so that is not highly productive job so it's just a opinion like when we this should be accounted but at the same time productivity should also be counted attract yes yes uh, sr you you have a you have a question one is a comment uh, i think <coughs> there is a problem with framing of narratives uh, um, bala sir tends to look at the glass is half full others say that the glass is half empty but i think the proper narrative should be the glass should have been full but it is only half empty uh, that is one thing because if you compare with uh, uh, kerala is a highly educated uh, you know high whatever you know high health industry etc etc it should have been switzerland it should have been israel but <laughs> you know that is where we that is, that is how the f narrative should be framed that is my uh, do you have a question a specific question yeah i mean oh, it's a com comment as well as a question and then another thing is this G uh, uh, remarkable uh, growth of manufacturing i feel it should be uh, viewed in two ways one is this uh, food uh, you know eatables etc etc you know uh, we uh, you know elite uh, you know all these food cons consumables which obviously only you know muruk for example all these p things uh, go into the G gsdp and i think that is not we shouldn't count that because uh, muruk or chips banana chips can be made only by carelites so it's like saying you know manalam journalists came up with the you know best uh, kridi i mean other than care lights who else can right so we shouldn't count those kind of things into that uh, thing so i think i'll call it short like uh, here we were talking about women going outside uh, after 10th and all now the ceiling is coming down earlier it was uh, for the jobs they used to go out or after pg then after graduation now after 10th standard they are going out it's uh, not only about the economics of it but uh, it's about the social reasons also that's what i feel because uh, here the women don't want to live in kerala after a certain time because of this uh, social reasons the, how the society intrudes into their private space the yes. staring and such things so the girls tell we can't live here it, it we want to go out freedom. that's one of the reason freedom. yeah so freedom. they're looking for freedom so yeah. that's also so reason we why have to out. look at it from the social angle as well that's what i feel absolutely you are you. you are so right here, here we have this habit of asking permission for everything but uh, uh, the bottom line is you know freedom is not his to give to you freedom is yours to take so let's take our freedom so thank you